other LP tank is in the garage. I have to take it to work today. Excuse me, take it to town today and fill it. So there'll be uh, one and a half full tanks of LP. So if you're running a generator, you can plug this into there. Otherwise, plug it into your shore power at the campground. Fill tank for the water. It's clean. Not all grubby, dirty like some of them. There's a... Uh, There's just some slight cracking going on right there. It's not even through, it's just kind of <clears throat> pulled a little bit for the caulking. Otherwise, the caulk is real good. We hope we can see that. No, uh, it's still on. The, I put it on the truck. Cock is all good in here. <clears throat> this bubble, I think, uh, might have a leak in it. It's not, I think it's got more air in it than what it's supposed to. Separate, or that's just a mark. But I was trying to find cracks in the, in the uh, cock, but I can't. Exterior shower. tube to drain the your holding tank. Keep some sanitizer in with there and I also keep some rubber bars.
red button here. Battery's on or battery's off as far as disconnecting it. I don't know if you can see that in there. But it holds a single battery, and uh, if you were to disconnect the strap, you can slide it, slide it out, get your battery out. It's all nice and clean in there. There's some dirt along here, but I think that's dirt that attached to the caulking inside. Jacks, you know, had just a little bit of grease come down on them. Um, nothing major. It's probably just normal. I don't think I cleaned the sewer holes. I guess it's a little dusty in here. The sewer holes are just Nothing fancy with the sewer holes, it's just as basic sewer holes. There's some things that you can tell um, if a camper is stored inside or outside. Look at these feet that they have. <clears throat> and these feet would be rusted. You know, rusted all around. They've been stored inside. Um, these are not. This camper's been stored inside all the time. <coughs> this is step. Uh, you can either put this step where it is, or you can put this step over here. Um, just step up to the side and be able to look right there. This step does step up. Give it a little jerk away from the wall. Lift it up and latch it right here. Latch. Latch it right there. And then uh, you'll have access to the compartment. here and drains in. Up there and there ends up with a little tiny bit of water on there. This is all fully sealed uh, galvanized compartment. Um, water's not coming from anywhere else in here. There's a uh, gas line right here and then the electrical goes to run the generator. Otherwise I just keep uh, tools and a grill and whatnot in there. It's a nice big storage. It must be I don't know four cubic feet maybe. This is probably one of the dirtiest doors truck if it go down dusty roads or whatever. Uh, there's a little crack here. I wonder if that's water get in there. It is a little wet in there, isn't it? See this door, this made to this door is made to have this piece right here removed. So then there's just this screen and then uh, I guess the Vent. From what I understand, um, 
there's no hole in there to make there's no hole in there anywhere to uh have an exhaust come in. So I'm wondering if water if rainwater goes in here. Runs down this door. And it's not it's not real spongy or anything, but it does have this crack in it. Alright. That's a little issue with the camper. You know, nothing major. It's not coming inside the camp or anything like that. Yeah, it's a little wet right here. It must have rained last night or something. I'm not sure. If that's left over from when I washed it, I wouldn't think so. I wiped this out and wiped it down. It's got, you know, 15 years of stains of setting stuff in there. Got the uh, bottle opener, which is very important. Crack open your bottle of root beer. And I'm going to take this down. This little latch thing. It's hard to do with one hand again. There you go. I just flip this to the back in case they fall and catch it on myself. All right, before I go on the roof, I got one more over here, actually two. <clears throat> Water heater, so this uh, this spring my wife and I are camping, all of a sudden the pump keeps pumping for some reason. It pumped and I go, what the heck going on? And here, the valve um, started leaking on me. So $15 later, I put a new valve in there. No big deal. I, Took off the shroud, take off this shroud here, then you can access access this valve very easy to take off. Never had any problems. The automatic automatic uh, hot water heater. The flame comes on all by itself. It's self igniting, and then when it's hot, it shuts off. So all you gotta do is flip a switch inside and make sure there's make sure there's gas. I've not replaced I've not replaced this. Um, it's probably half gone. I forget what the I iode or diode or uh, whatever that little is it a magnesium bar or something like that that goes in there. But that's how I drain it every year. Pull that out and let it drain. Um, again, it's clean. I've never had to. It says push to reset. I've never had to reset this thing. Never had any issues with it at all. Okay this up and then some more caulking you can see uh, I don't know if you can see it there's a very little very little crack right there of caulk that's the extent of the There's a, let me see, on the undercarriage here, I should just point out, there's a couple dents. Um, excuse me, a couple dents. You can see them right there. So I assume that someone had this on a pickup truck with the cab lights, and the thing might have might have bounced and smashed against the cab lights. Put those dents, there's two little dents right there. And there's a couple more on the other side. So that's about it, the dents. Jacks are in very good shape. No rust, no rust, no 
rust. The legs. These are my tie downs. I, I welded them together, made them myself, fastened them. And these are my fast guns. They do not go with the camper. Um, the back of the refrigerator. I've traveled down a few roads sometimes and you see these things laying alongside of the road. This one's a little bit tough to open. But I just turn it with my key. For some reason these things pop off on people. I don't know how it happens. So we'll remove that. And then we got the back of the refrigerator. And just set that right there. So fairly clean in here. Again, it collects dust and whatnot, but it plugs in. The refrigerator plugs in for uh, 12 volt. Um, it has, excuse me, uh, 120 shore power. It has the 12 volt. Um, it also runs off of gas, and the gas lines back here. Everything's automatic. The thing can sense on what most is most efficient for it to use, and uses that. It's a Dominic Royale. Um, it has apparently has um, maybe some fuses back here, and there's some spare fuses here. I've never used these. These came with the camper. Never had an issue with this unit, which is very nice. They say to just run them level, or they don't run when they're not level. I mean, I've been slightly cockeyed, and the thing runs. I run on LP when I'm going down the road. No issues. Very good camper. Again, it's pretty clean. There's some natural, I don't know about natural rust, whatever, but there's some just some surface stuff on there. Probably should have took some steel wool maybe and cleaned that off, but otherwise it's, uh, there's no cobwebs and dead spiders and dead flies and moths in there, nothing like that. Because I do try to keep it nice and clean. I run this uh, camper on an F-250 diesel, the 7.3. It's a 90, excuse me, 2002 unit. It's got overload springs on it. And handles very nice. Go ahead and call the house number. If you want. It never rings. Landlines never do. All right, let me see. We're gonna go on the roof. Ladybug. <clears throat> so I'm gonna pause this and climb up on the roof. Now you wanna look down the side of the camper, okay? See any bulges? I guess some people check out the